ಭಕ್ತಿಯಾಮಿಜಾನಾತಿ ಯಾವನ್ ಯಾಸ್ಮಿ ತತ್ವತ ತಥೋ ಮಾಂ ತತ್ವತ ಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾ ವಿಶತೆ ತದನಂತರ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಇಂಡೀಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲಿ ಕವರ್ಸ್ ಬೋತ್ the means and the goal within the shloka we are now transiting in our journey from self realization to god realization atma sakshatkara to paramatma sakshatkara and the means to attain paramatma sakshatkara is the blissful pathway of bhakti bhakti yoga so this one shloka summarizes the very essence of bhakti yoga and the reward of practicing bhakti yoga it builds on the foundation of karma jnana the foundation of atma sakshatkara and then teaches as to how the one who has attained the state of atma sakshatkara with a mind that is serene with a mind that is purified with all the obstacles that come in the way of bhakti to blossom and grow starts to practice bhakti yoga and in that process bhaktya mam abhijanati abhijanati krishna says it is through bhakti that i can be known here arjuna bhaktya mam abhijanati knowing is a very important word in the gita and in our shastras we see seeing and knowing be using being used synonymously So Krishna basically says it is bhakti that you can know me it is through bhakti that you can see me bhaktya mam abhijanati yavan yachasmi tatvatah so this the second statement is very important he arjuna through bhakti one gets to know me know me as i am know me completely know me in truth it is not partial knowing it is knowing him completely knowing the truth knowing him as he is yavan yachasmi tatvatah tatho mam tatvato gnyatva tatha tatah tatvatah gnyatva this tatah here is through bhakti through that parama bhakti that krishna talks about through bhakti tatpatah gnyatva one gets to know in the pra- by practicing bhakti one gets to know me completely tatpatah know me as i am and by knowing me tatpatah gnyatva vishate tadanantaram tadanantaram thereafter in that very life thereafter means not sometime in the future but in that very life vishate tadanantaram vishate he enters my supreme abode so therefore we see how krishna here is not only talking about the blissful pathway of bhakti yoga he is also talking about the reward of performing bhakti yoga and what is the outcome of performing bhakti yoga tatvatah knowing him as he is knowing him in in truth our children chanted today the fourth chapter there also krishna says janma karma ch me divyam evam yo veti tatvatah tyaktva deham punar janma naitimame iti sorjuna there itself krishna assures tyaktva deham punar janma there is no more punar janma there is no more rebirth tyaktva deham once this utility of this sharira this body is over 
त्यक्वादेहम पुन देर इज नो मोर पुन अर्जुन इति मामेति सोर्जुन हे अर्जुन आई गारंटी मोक्ष आई गारंटी मोक्ष टू टू हूम जन्म कर्म च मे दिव्यम एवं योवेति तत्वतः वन हु नोज मी एज आई एम एंड इन ऑर्डर फॉर अस टू नो हिम व्हिच इज नॉट वेरी इजी नोइंग हिम इज नॉट इजी एट ऑल बिकॉज़ द शास्त्रस देमसेल्व्स एट सम पॉइंट दे से वी कैन नो हिम at some other point they say we cannot know him at some point they say he is very easy to be known at some other point the same shastra says it is impossible for us to know him so we are in a state of confusion can i know him or can i can i not know him krishna clarifies he says it is possible hey arjuna and he also gives the way to easily know him and in the fourth chapter in the context of sharing revealing his avatara rahasya he says janma karma chame divyam yovam yevetti pratatpatah one who know my avatara rahasya my avatar cheshtitas one who understands knows then for such a person there is no more river tatpatah knowing him fully just because he is taken various forms one should know that the forms do not limit him even when he takes avataras he remains sarveshwara sarvadhara so therefore tatpataha knowing him completely he, he is the jagat karana he is the sarvadhara he is the sarva niyanta he is the sarva shariri so he he is the one who is the cause the support the protector he he if this world is a utility for him and him alone he is the shariri everything else is sharira the one who knows the essence of his true nature tatpataha the truth for him the next janma need is not definitely not there i assure but again he also adds hey arjuna manushyanam sahasreshu kaschid yatati siddhaye यततामपि सिद्धानां कश्चिन मां वेति तत्वतः टू नो मी कंप्लीटली इन ट्रुथ इट्स नॉट इजी इट टेक्स सेवरल लाइफ टाइम्स थाउजेंड्स एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ पीपल ट्राई एंड ऑफ दोस हु ट्राई कम सम कम ऑन टू द ट्रैक दोस हु कम ऑन टू द ट्रैक आउट ऑफ थाउजेंड्स एंड थाउजेंड्स वन विल लेट गेट टू नो मी एंड आउट ऑफ थाउजेंड्स एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ दोस हु नो मी one will eventually come to attain me so therefore it is not easy but krishna shows us the path krishna gives us the path and reveals the easiest path to reach him and know him as what he also says hey arjuna know me as vasudeva sarvamiti tatvatah know him knowing him fully completely is vasudeva sarvamiti the so, vasudeva sarva all is vasudeva means he is our taraka he is our poshaka he is our bhogya so, very important to realize this bhagavan is our taraka taraka life giver and life saver he is the life giver and life saver not just he is the life giver he only is the life giver and life saver he is our taraka he is our poshaka he is the one who nourishes us he is the bhogya he is the one who is to be enjoyed when we say vasudeva sarvamiti everything is vasudeva means the realization that he is taraka he is poshaka he is bhogya it is very important to realize that this samsarik world is a hospital the samsarik world is a hospital and we are all patients now in this hospital unfortunately we are always inhospitable to the doctor krishna the supreme doctor is the one who is administering various treatments to us but without realizing that we are inhospitable to him so bhakti is becoming hospitable to the doctor to do exactly as per his instructions only when we focus on the treatment some say the world is to be enjoyed if the world is to be enjoyed it is like going to a hospital and booking ourselves in the possibly the premium ward 
and not focusing on the treatment. Just because we book into a premium ward enjoying 5 star facilities in a hospital, the disease cannot be treated. The treatment, there has to be focus on the treatment. What happens is when we lose focus on the treatment, we may temporarily be in a nice 5 star ward in the hospital. It is just a matter of time before we once again go from one hospital to the other, from one department to the other. Our tenancy in the hospital continues forever. When we look at getting ourselves treated, no, we accept. Once we realize we are sick, we accept a treatment. The problem is to first accept that we are sick. We have to accept that in samsara, samsaric world, we are really sick. What is our sickness? Our misdirected desires. Now, first we have to accept our sickness. After accepting a sickness, we will always be ready for treatment. Even in our bodily sickness, once we accept we are sick, we are ready to go through a treatment. But then when we are going through a treatment, we are always waiting for the treat after the treatment. Isn't it? We always treat the treatment and the treat thereafter as two separate things. While we are undergoing treatment, we are dreaming. Now, of the treat, after once I get discharged from this hospital, I, I have to treat myself, get my, myself treated. So, the treatment and the treat are two different things. Luckily for us, Krishna gives us a pathway where he rolls both the treatment and the treat together progressively, which is Bhakti Yoga. Where the treatment and the treat are combined together in progression, which will lead us slowly recover in this very hospital and eventually not come back to be ad again, once again admitted. Discharging from the hospital, the journey never ends because a sick patient gets discharged from the hospital only to come back again. Samsara is also like that. So, but then the moment we practice bhakti, through bhakti, we get discharged from this hospital and we get reach our home where we eternally belong. That is why Krishna clearly tattvataha to know that Vasudeva Sarvamiti. So immediately the question we ask, Krishna says Bhaktya Maam Abhijanati. Knowing one who you can know me well. The question that we always have is how can we know him completely? Is it really possible at all? How is it possible? Can the finite know and understand that, that which is infinite. This is always a challenge for us. Our faculties are finite. Our capabilities are finite. With a finite capability, how can we know, understand the infinite? Just like how the sun cannot be found by a spark. The illumination of the a spark has its own illumination, no doubt. But the spark's illumination is not enough for the spark to find the sun. Krishna is like the sun. We are all like the sparks. It is not easy or it is impossible for the spark to find the sun. But the spark can find the sun if the sun wishes. If Bhagavan wishes with his will, with his grace, yes, the finite can know the infinite. In, when it comes to material sciences, how do we know material objects? We say we know something by testing the object. You know, we go through a series of experiments. We put the object of matter to test under our control, controlled experimentation. And through that controlled experimentation, we get to know that object. Which means to understand a material object, we are figuratively standing above it because we are controlling it. We are subjecting it to controlled experimentation. When it comes to spiritual science, this process does not work. Even in spiritual science, we experiment. But we don't put the object to experimentation, the object being Krishna, in the spiritual sciences, subject undergoes experimentation. Subject meaning I. I put myself to experimentation. 
in order for me to know the object. In the case of matter, I understand matter by standing above it. But in the case of Krishna, I understand Krishna by standing under Krishna. Standing under Krishna essentially means molding my heart, molding my mind as per Krishna. That is why Krishna very clearly says, he, he, he loudly declares, he says, there is no other way, Arjuna, to know me. Even the Shastras say, Nayamatma pravachanena labhyaha namedaya nabhuna shrutena. Nayamatma pravachanena labhyaha namedaya nabhuna shrutena. It is impossible to, to, to know Bhagavan through any means. Vedaischa sarvai rahameva vedya Krishna says, say, Krishna also says, it is impossible to know me through the study of Veda. It is impossible to know me. Through worship, it is impossible to know me through any samskaras that you perform. How do I know you, hey, hey, hey Krishna? How do I know you? Immediately he answers. He says, Bhaktya Tvananyaya Shakya Ahamevam Vido Arjuna. Hey Arjuna, Bhaktya Tvananyaya Shakya Ahamevam Vido Arjuna. Nyatum Drashtum Tatatvena Praveshtum Chaparantapa. It is only through bhakti that I can know him, which means. It is not possible to know him only with my effort. But my effort is required. My effort is necessary but not sufficient. I cannot say that my effort is not required, not needed. My effort is very much needed. But my effort alone will not help me to know him. That's why he says, hey Arjuna, bhaktya tu ananyaya shakya. Apart from bhakti, there is no other way. Nyatum drashtum chatatvena praveshtum chaparantapa. Nyatum drashtum praveshtum. You know, he beautifully puts the stages. Nyatum knowing him, drashtum seeing him, praveshtum entering a supreme about attaining him. That's a process. This entire process is through practicing bhakti. We can know him, and by knowing him, we can actually see him. You know, we discussed this many times before. We ask, keep asking this question. How can we see him? Can we really see him? Yes, Krishna categorically assures. Nyatum drashtum chatatvena praveshtum chaparantapa. Therefore, definitely we can see him. We can see him at three different levels. What are the three different levels? You know, in this process of bhakti, when we are practicing bhakti yoga, Krishna assures Bhaktya Tvananyaya Shakya Aham Vevam Vidorjuna Nyatum Drashtum Tatatvena Praveshtum Chaparantapa. Knowing, it's I can understand, okay, knowing I can know him through Bhakti. Attaining him, I attain him through Bhakti. Krishna also assures, you can also see me here, Arjuna. Now we are it's it's exciting for us. You know, say, yes, this is exactly what. I have been waiting for to see Krishna. So how do I see him? I can see him. Krishna, Krishna clearly explains. I can see him three different levels. I can see him at three, three different levels being connection, pervasion, presence. I can see him at the level of connection. What is seeing him at the level of connection? Let's take a simple example. A mother loves her child very much. And even after the child goes to school, the mother is working at home and she sees the, the things, the playthings of the child, the clothes that the child wears, the books that the child reads. And in everything that she sees, she can see the child because she connects that little toy. Huh? This is my, you know, my, my little one's toy. This is the book that... My little one is read yesterday. This is the, the, the clothes that's away. So therefore, everything is connected and through that connection, the mother can see the child, even if the child is not physically in the house. We too can see Krishna through connection. We can connect everything and anything with Krishna and in that process, because everything belongs to him. A child may have two toys, three books, ten dresses. 
entire brahmanda belongs to krishna so therefore can't we find things with which we can connect them? we don't need to go searching how to connect what with krishna everything belongs to him everything and anything can be connected with him so therefore can we see krishna we can see him at the level of connection can we see krishna at the level of pervasion yes yadyad vibhuti mat sattvam shrimadurjita mevava tatta deva avagachatvam mama tejamsa sambhavam krishna proudly declares yadyad vibhuti mat sattvam everything is his vibhuti he pervades and permeates so which means when i see everything i can see every object as his sharira i can see everything beautiful that is manifesting a fraction of his beauty so knowing his pervasion i can see him that is at the second level seeing him at the level of pervasion seeing him at the level of presence seeing his divya mangala vikraha seeing his beautiful form which is so very magnetic you now it seems brahma was very interested in testing krishna brahma was desperately wanting to test krishna brahma was witnessing the gala time bhagavan was having on bhuloka vrindavana was filled with laughter vrindavana was filled with love there was so much of celebration every day was a celebration bhagavan was enjoying together with the gopikas the gopas and all the gauvs all the cows and the calves and every day he would lead all the, go, the gopas and the the cow herds and the cows and the calves to the forest in the vrindavana and in the pretext of tending the cows he would celebrate have enjoy the company of the gopas and the gopas obviously would enjoy the company of krishna brahma witnessing this wanted to test krishna so one fine day brahma goes and while on the banks of yamuna without krishna's it brahma thought without krishna knowing let me steal all the gopas and steal all the cows and the calves brahma stole all of them hundreds and hundreds of gopas hundreds and thousands of cows krishna comes back and sees there is no one krishna with a smile understands and he, and he tells himself if brahma wants to play a game with me let me also play a game with him lavan brahma the game begins and then immediately krishna manifests himself as hundreds and hundreds of cow herds hundreds and hundreds of cows and calves and then that day they all go back to gokula and there is something very special in every family every mother in gokula always was longing to cuddle krishna they were very jealous of yashoda because yashoda had all rights over krishna they only had little time with him so they were always very jealous that they never had time with krishna they had cute boys and girls they had their own children but somehow there was that longing in them that they were not able to spend the time with krishna that day something magical happened all the children all the gopas reached home and there was that unknown ecstasy filled in the air throughout every every home was was lit with love every mother all of a sudden was experiencing unimaginable bliss cuddling their own child they felt as though they were actually cuddling little krishna their longing all of a sudden was getting fulfilled that bonding was so deep and the happiness that every household of raja was experiencing was unimaginable not only that every cow and calf was also bonding and as it is in gokula cows used to give tons and tons liters and liters of milk from that day onwards milk was abundantly pouring everywhere instead of water it was milk everywhere the cows were so happy they were just giving milk everywhere the roads were filled with milk because why the cows were in ecstasy bonding with the calves all krishna everywhere 
this went on one day two day three day one month can you imagine the bliss of the people of gokula how blessed they are unknowingly they were experiencing krishna unknowingly they were experiencing brahmananda every day while they were in bhuloka that is why the land of raja is so very blessed it is even more blessed than vaikuntha because without even any effort all the all of them were enjoying the bliss one year passed brahma couldn't contain himself what was going on and then he knowing his mistake he comes back and then krishna says the game is not yet over brahma the game is not yet you started it i will finish the game brahma comes to return the cow, all the calves and the cow herds lo and behold brahma sees not one krishna not one narayana he sees thousands of narayanas every gopa every cow every calf was with shanka chakra padma gada you know i you know the paramatma was standing there thousands and thousands of them brahma was beyond words this is a visual spectacle that he had never experienced ever before nor he would ever experience throughout the time he says as brahma in that position not one divya mangala vigraha thousands and thousands of divya mangala vigraha that is an unimaginable experience that brahma had all that we can ask is not on that scale but is it possible to have the vision of his divya mangala vigraha krishna assures it is possible bhaktya tvananyaya shakya aham evam vidorjuna jnatum drashtum cha tatvena praveshtum cha parantapa bhaktya mam abhijanati ek e arjuna bhaktya mam abhijanati abhijanati he are not just knowing knowing doesn't end just the, ro- the road of knowing goes to realizing experiencing eventually seeing and then attaining so this that is why it's blissful this pathway of knowing him of bhakti is not just reaching the destination the journey is as beautiful if not more than the destination krishna continues to reveal himself in so many ways giving us those blissful moments that initially may last for only few moments but as we go along this journey the moments expand knowing to experiencing to realizing to seeing eventually attaining tatho mam tatvatah gnyatva vishate tadanantaram he says vishate tad eventually through that bhakti that parama bhakti knowing knowing me eventually one attains a supreme abode no this is the beauty so imagine imagine you have to go to a, a distant place to meet somebody very special a vip you have to meet you have taken the appointment you have to go and see him you don't know ex- the exact location but you know he is thousands and thousands of miles away so therefore somehow you get a well wisher gives you a map and says you know this is the map follow you have to first take a bus ride and go all the way and then he takes the bus ride but then on the way he loses you lose you lose the map you are in the bus but you don't have the map you don't know what to do next then a kind hearted soul he comes comes to you he says don't worry i am there i will tell you what to do next i know you want to go what you do is after you get down from this bus now then you need to take a train to go to another location let me give you the directions this is the train this is the platform and this is the station that you need to get into you start making a note on a chit and then you get down from the bus he also takes you to that railway station he says bye bye all the best then you get into the train once again you inside the pocket you try to pull out the chit that you have written it's missing once again you lost it you are lost now you got into the train but you don't know which station to get into how to get out what to do next 
Lo and behold, the same nice gentleman who, who helped you at the back, he once again comes, he is there. Hey, don't worry, I am here. He says, all that you need to do is, after you get down from the station, you need to cross the road and you need to reach a river and then you have to take this ferry number 8 at this pier and it will take you to across the ferry. From there you take a flight. I will give you all the directions and let me come with you to the pier so that you can get into the ferry. You are so thankful to that person. And then you go there with all the notes. Once again, you are very holding it very secure. And then you get into the boat. You know you are on the right boat. But there is a splash of water and then everything that you have written goes. Now you are worried. Now you know after you you know you will get down, but then what? Which flight to carry? Which you know where, where to? And then as you are wondering about before getting down, the same person who guided you until then is there standing. Don't worry, I am there. Let me take you to the right airport and to the right flight. And he goes, he books the ticket and you board the flight and you get in. And then when you get in, you completely forget, oh, I should have asked him after I get down what to do. You are wondering, okay, now the flight goes, you get down and you are wondering, you are lost, what to do. And then you see in the airport, the same person asks, is receiving you. Don't worry, I am here. Come, come, come. Now, from here, you need to go up the hill, trek it out and then at the top of the hill is your destination. Then you go, go up the hill. As you climb up, you have no energy. As it is, we are physically weak, few steps up, few steps down, panting, panting for breath, thirsty and then very hungry and then you turn around. This person is there holding a glass of water, holding some food. He not only gives you food and water, he feeds you food, he gives you refreshing drink. And then with all the energy, you keep going up, you again once again look at him, he says, you are on the right track, don't worry, go straight up, take right, take left and then on top of the mountain you will find the house of your VIP. You do all that, finally you go up, you are in front of the door of your VIP. Knock, 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 the door opens. What do you find? The same person who was there right at the beginning of your journey, who was guiding you during every step giving you directions, comforting you, protecting you, assuring you that you are on the right track. The destination is your companion. This is the beauty of knowing Krishna. Knowing Krishna means knowing his presence with you all the time. Bhaktya maam abhijanati. No, this abhijanati Knowing Krishna is so, that is why he adds it immediately. What, what does he say? Abhijanati. He says, he says, Yavan yachasmi tattvataha. Know, know me as I am, know in truth, which means know his presence. His presence with us all the time, guiding us as our companion. As we walk, go along, journey to attain him, he is there with us every moment. Tathomam tatpatah jnatva vishate tadanantaram. And then finally, knock knock, archiradi marga, knock knock, Bhagavan is there to take us all the way, vishate tadanantaram, to his own very abode, Paramapada Shri Vaikunta. In one shloka, Krishna beautifully explains how through bhakti we can know him completely know him as he is, know the truth and that knowing is what will ensure us eventually attaining him in a supreme abode. Sarvam Sri Krishna Parmastam.